Well, welcome to Modeling Time with me, Brian Bannon. And in this video series, um, I'm going to be building a kit. Now, the reason I'm building this kit is to help fellow modelers who want to build a kit understand the sequence in putting these together. There are no instructions in the box, and um, there are instructions online. And although the instructions online are good at telling you what variations to put on for the desired era model that you're building, they don't really go through the proper sequence. And if you don't do the proper sequence, you're not going to be happy with this model and it may end up in the trash because you've glued everything together and then you can't put it together. So, um, what I'm going to build is one of these um, tangent uh, PS2 4750 covered hoppers. You know, there's nothing in the box because it's all on my desk here. Um, I, d I bought three of them and I took all three of them out of the box and if you do that you can forget about putting it back in the box because the way that they pack these things is interesting. <laughs> anyway, um, it could damage the parts the way they pack them but luckily they won't um, one of them was kind of tweaked a bit, but it wasn't tweaked enough where it broke in half or anything like that. Now my kits, and we found out that all of these kits did not come with the trough roof, roof hatches. So if you're going to buy one, now I understand that in August, next month, they're supposed to get a, a shipment of new, uh, apparently another run of 4750s because they're getting more roof hatches in. So I was sent some decorated cars where everything was glued, or not cars, but roofs that had all the hatches glued on. So I soaked them for a couple days in 91% isopropyl alcohol and gingerly and carefully pried them loose um, without too much damage to the edges. I mean, there's not enough damage that you can even see anything. It's just when you pry it up, the plastic might deform a little bit, but I can fix that um, with some pliers by crimping it back down and stuff. So, um, let me get the camera set up here and we'll go over what, you know, how I start building these kits. Alright, so first thing you want to do, of course, is naturally take it out of the box. <laughs> But um, you want to get all your parts spread out on the table here. Let me see, is this wide? Yeah, that's wide. Okay, so I'll put everything up here. So basically the boxes or the kits come with all these parts cut off the trees and then they're stuffed inside of the, um, they're stuffed inside the hopper. And then you got your trucks. The trucks for this model are on my, the one that I've, I'm working on. Um, as shop trucks because the trucks for the one I'm working on are painted and I need to weather the wheels and, and the couplers. So right now, and I got to put some decals on the truck side frames. So right now the wheels, the truck sets for this model are over on the paint bench. So, and I don't need them right now anyway. So, um, oh, this is a piece of plastic I'll use for something. I can't remember what, but I'll use it for something. Um, so anyway, We'll get everything put out. Oh, and also one of my kits did not come with this part. So they sent me a whole set of these um, pieces. And this is one of the pieces, or the this assembly is one of the assemblies that if you don't do the sequence right, you're not going to get these on without breaking them. All right. So, we got everything dumped out. I do like very much... Oh, here's some more parts. So, here's a more little baggie of parts. And here's all the metal parts. So, what I'm going to do here first is all the screws and everything. Um, so, what I do like about this is I really like how they did the weight. The weight's really nice. And then you got... Let me get my model building glasses on Optivisors and so on this part here so I'm going to put everything back here take this off of here put everything back here for right now and then I'll go through all of the parts and pieces 
So I don't need those screws. Those are the truck screws. These are the coupler box screws. Don't need those. And these are the screws I need. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this weight on the inside. Actually, no. The last time I did put the weight on the inside, but this time I'm going to wait till um, I do the cleanup of this. Now, there really is no cleanup on this. There are, I mean, there is a little bit of um, flash on the edges, and we'll go through and clean all that up. Yeah, there's definitely flash on this inside edge, and, uh, and stuff like that. Same with this edge and this edge. I mean, that's not a complaint. That's with any kit. You're gonna get some flash or mold parting lines. But this kit, or this molding, is very, very well done. So we're gonna put that aside. Put the weight up here. Um, the brake, the train line, brake line I'll make out of brass. Uh, on the first model I did when I cut these off, I used sprue nippers, the PBL sprue nippers, and when I did that, it snapped right here. I don't know why, but it did, so I probably won't be using that piece. I'll probably do the brass piece like I did on the other one, so we'll just set that one aside. Um, next up, we got the roof hatch. This is one I had to take off, and you can see where the glue where all the glue was on it that I had to nip off and I don't know if you can see real closely on here but you can kind of see where I was prying the roof hatch off so but it's not too bad it's not too bad I'll go along here and and fix that with some flat nose pliers so I'll put that aside now you also right now we don't need the roof and when we do get to the roof we'll be taking this off actually let's just go ahead and take it off now they don't glue it on there is one piece on here that when I get to it, I'll have to find it, but uh, uh, there it is. Oh, they actually cut it off. Okay, good. Never mind. I'll, I'll show you what I'm talking about when I get to that. So I'm going to put that aside, upside down, so nothing ha bad happens to it. So we got the roof, and then we've got, let's see, these are, these are the supports that go on to this end, these ends. Actually it goes, oh, it goes down here like that. So it goes on these ends. So I'll uh, just check to make sure we got, we got two with, one with pin, one with a hole, two with a hole, and one with, okay, so we got all the pieces here. So you, for these triangular bolster pieces, you're going to have three without the hole and one with the hole through it. So that's the way those are. So those are good. Those need to get cleaned up. All right. Put the stuff aside. These screws I'll put with the weight. They go with the weight there. Those will go on once I, once I clean this car up. We'll put this weight on. Uh, these are good. Let's see what we got in here. So let's separate. Oh, looks like I got a broken part. I'll show you the broken part. All right, so let's see. We got the end, one of the end cages. We have to clean that up. So I'm going to just set all these parts aside. I'm going to put these screws with the roof hat or the roof walkway because I don't need this stuff right now. Alright, so we got a, a ladder piece. Put that over here. We've got another end cage piece oh, with the ladder piece in it. So let's put the end cage over here. Got another side ladder support. Put that over there. These are the um, rope poles. So we got two there. Right now, what you want to make sure is you have all the parts. So we've got a um, end sheet. Put that over here. 
We got another end sheet. Put that over here. Uh, we got center bay braces. Let's see, we've got uh, pin. Supposed to have pins, but they're broken. Holes and holes. Okay, so we got those. Those are correct. So we got all those. Let's put that over there. So we got those. That's what we got here. Okay, I don't need that. I don't need that because they gave me new ones for these. I don't need that. This is the kit that had them in it. This kit over here that you don't see doesn't have all of the parts in it. So I will just go put all of these parts with that kit. And now I'll have a complete kit. All right. So, oh, I was wrong. There is no broken part. I just saw, I thought one of these ladders was broken off and I just saw that part. But no, everything's good. Thank goodness. So there's another side ladder support. No broken parts. Another side ladder support, so we're good there. Now I know what I need because I um, put the first kit together, and when I put the first kit together, I had a model to use as reference, a decorated model to use as reference. Here we got the um, the uh, MU hose or train line hose, and we got another set of rope poles which we need. We got that. And we got, oh boy, look at that. And I, this is all bent up. This is the bottom of the end cage. You can see how bent that is. And I bet you that's due to them stuffing it into the hopper itself. I'll, uh, I'll work that down and fix it, glue it together when, it, when the time comes. This one seems to be okay. So all those parts are there. I'm... I'm not concerned about the metal parts. I'm sure they're all in there, and I'm not concerned about that at all. And let's look at what we got here. Let's zoom in on this a little bit. There we go. Out there. That should do good. All right, so let me get my little baggie out over here that has all the other truck parts in it. They give you plenty of extra roller bearing caps. So let's put all those roller bearing caps in the bag here. Hey, get over here. They give you extra brake hangers, clasps, more bearing caps. And that is it. Okay, put that over with this kit over here. All right, so what do we got in this pile? Okay, so here we got bottom gates. So there's one, two, and three. That's good. Then we got Bolster, we got two bolsters, we need that. I think this is the retainer valve, so we need that. Let's put that up there. There's a triple valve, so we need that. Uh, what do we got here? We got the brake reservoir, or the air reservoir, we got that. Brake wheel. We have a, forget what support that's for. That's for something. Is that, that's, oh, that's the triple valve support. So we got the triple valve support. We got the shakers. One, two, three, four, five, 
six. Okay, so we got the shaker brackets. That's good. Oh, I got another triple valve support. I'll put that over there. I got a brake housing. Put that over there. Got draft gearbox covered. Two draft gearbox covers. We're good there. Brake cylinder. We're good there. Brake mechanisms. Good there for one end. Another one for the other end. We got the pipe that comes off the train line hose. And we got another train line hose. And what's that? Uh, maybe that's the retainer valve. I can't remember which one's which. But we need this one. So we'll put that there. So all the parts are there. So that, that's good. So we got all the parts. So I'm not going to bore you with the next step. But I'm going to explain to you the next step. All of these parts that I've got over here, they need to be cleaned up. There's some flash on them. There's some um, mold parting lines and such. If you don't do that, you're not going to get a clean model. So you want to just take the time and clean them up. So let me go ahead and do that. I'll clean up the, fla the, the flash on here. I guess you could call, I don't know what they call it. It's not really flash, or maybe it is flash, but it's when the, when the, yeah, it is flash, duh. It's when the uh, mold, the molds aren't like super, super tight together to the point where plastic can't get between the seams and just a little bit. It's almost as if when the molds go together, there's a little roll under and the plastic kind of comes out, but you can see it, it's there and it just needs to be cleaned up. Now it's very very important when you're cleaning up these parts to do what? What's that? What did I say all the time? To use a new blade. If you don't use a new blade or your blade is a little old it's not gonna scrape cleanly. It's gonna chatter and it's gonna pull. So you want to use a new blade and um, that way you can get a nice scrape going and it'll clean it off very very nicely and uh, in some instances you can use a, a sanding stick so I, I'll bring a sanding stick over here and you can get in there and you can do some sanding but you can't get up in those corners so it's best to get you know a brand new blade so that you can get in there and you can scrape oh this blade's still new so it's scraping really good. So you can get in there and you can scrape. Scrape all sides. Just look at everything. Go over with a fine tooth comb and just look at everything that's going on. Like for instance, there's a little, that's a bolt head, but it's got a little bit of flash on it and, and stuff. So let me go ahead and clean up all these parts and then I'll show you what you have to clean up next. All right. There's one thing I want to show you here. Well, anyway, I know I got this part in the other kit too, and I have no idea where it goes. I went, I looked at on on all my other assembled kits and, or models, and I can't see anything that looks like that. So I don't know where that goes. <laughs> if I probably nothing you can really even see. Anyways, what I'm getting at here, um, I haven't finished cleaning up everything, but I want to show you how I clean up a mold parting line. That right there is a mold parting line. And how do I know that? One, you can see it. And two, it lines up perfectly with these end posts. And so the mold fits in here or maybe comes down like that and rests up against this area here. So there's a mismatch in the, uh, in the um, plastic on the surface. So in order to clean that up, what I need to do is scrape it. And it's it's not a small mismatch either. I mean it's enough that you need a lot of scraping. So sanding it's going to take you forever and you're going to uh, probably 
ruin the shape of this edge. So what I do is I, I'll take a knife and I'll just scrape it till the edge disappears. Now what you want to do, you don't want to scrape just that edge. You want to blend it, so you want to come deeper into the slope. You want to come deeper into the slope, like way back in here, so the angle gets blended. And you just work it till it's all gone. And the plastic is soft enough that it scrapes pretty nicely. Now I'm going to blend it. Just like that. So now I don't have a sharp angle. Now you can tell if you've blended both surfaces or both faces because you won't have a shiny line there. There we go. Okay, now we just take some water and wet sand it. And that seam is is all gone. So I just want to show you that. And the other thing I forgot to mention while you're cleaning the, the slough off or the flash, you also need to clean off these points like here where they cut it off the sprue. Same as over here. And you want to clean off these bottom posts a little. They kind of um, sloughed up a little bit there too. So. Let me get back to cleaning up. I've got this end all done. I now have to just do this end. Whoa. And I'm not course. done with um, cleaning up all the parts. I've got these cleaned up. I've got this cleaned up. And I've, I'm wor and I've got these cleaned up. I'm still working on that. But this isn't about bashing tangent. This is about showing you why you need to clean your parts up to make your car look better. Um, I'm going to show you um, something and you'll see, understand why probably. If you look on the bottom here, I don't know if you can see it, let me zoom in a little bit. Get the light over here, here we go. You see these, where these, these pieces here are these right here. You see where they go up against the bays here? There's a gap there. This one, there's a gap up here. There's a bigger gap right there. Massive gap in here and over here. And a pretty good size one here and here. Now the reason for that is because these parts I haven't cleaned yet. If you look closely here, this is where the mold is, parting line is, right here, right along here. This portion has a draft angle that goes down, and this portion has a draft angle that goes down. So when you put this up against the bays, this is going to have quite a good gap in it. Also, if you see right here, this flat area right here, it's at a different level than what this pin area is on. So it's going to cause this not to seat properly. And it's pretty much the same for the other side. There's a pretty good draft angle here. This is recessed down inside, so there's a lip here and a lip there. And, and such and on the bottom there's a there's a seam that runs across so these 
little rectangles on the ends here, they stick up a little bit higher than the, than the base. Now that's on the bottom, but you still want to clean it up. Now the reason why I'm getting into that, for those of you that want to weather your cars, if you go and weather your bays and you put a pin wash in here, that pin wash is just going to get sucked right down into that gap and you're going to get no effect at all with that. So, this is a car, one of these that I've finished, and you'll notice there's absolutely no gap in here or here in, in any of them. And the reason that is, is because after, these I'm cleaning up better than I clean these up. I had gaps in there, but I filled them with styrene, and I'll show you that when I put these on, because I've test fitted this one, and there's still a little bit of a gap. The, the parts don't fit perfectly together, but they do fit, they do fit well. So like I said, I'm not bashing tangent. Another reason you want to do your own cars, if, if you have the time, of course I know buying a car like this, you just put it on the track and it's done. That's cool. But you've got mold parting line, sprue booger, sprue booger, sprue booger, mold parting line, You've got sprue booger here, 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 here on all of on all of these here, 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 and here. You've got uh, sprue boogers on the tops of these here, here, and. No, this one's good, that one's good. So, and you got sprue boogers. Over there, you got mold parting line he all along this roof hatch. You got sprue boogers here, here, here. Pretty much wherever they cut it off the tree, you've got sprue boogers. So this is why I'm taking the time to clean up the car. It takes a while to do it but it needs it just needs to be done these end pieces the one that go the ones that go here these were horrendous with mismatches between the mold parting lines and stuff oh and another thing you'll notice on this car i don't know if you can see it too much oh, on this end the bolster yeah, you're not going to see that in there. The bolster here, right here, does not contact the frame, so it's a little askew. Um, those should contact the frame, and as you'll see on, on the car that I put together, the bolsters are right up against the frame. Here, here, here and here. They're supposed to be up against the, the, uh, the frame there. So that's something, you know, why you want to clean up stuff. I, I just wanted to take a break here a minute and point out some things um, that you really need to pay attention to. Now when I lock, now what's nice of what they did nice is these pins are in different locations on each side so you can't put it in backwards. So for instance, I can't take this and put it in this way, the pins won't line up. But you put it in this way, and the pins drop into the holes, at least they're supposed to. Oh, wrong way. <laughs> there we go. And since I've cleaned it up, you can see that the gap has been greatly reduced. And in some instances it's gone, but I still have to do a little bit of filling. On this side, it's this side's pretty good here. This side still has a little bit of a gap. But I'll do some filling and I'll show you how I do that. But that's why you need to go through and clean up your parts. Not only does it make it look better, but it helps your fit much, much better. And, and, and another thing to make it look better, if you look at the brake cylinder, there's a mold parting line all the way around it. On, on, on my car, 
where I've cleaned up the brake cylinder or the air cylinder, there's no mold parting line on it. So that's what, uh, that's what I wanted to go over real quick before I get back to this. I had to take a break and uh, it's a lot of stuff. This is about a full night's worth of modeling, cleaning these up and maybe into the next day. Because I don't just sit here and do this. I've been working on my Jeep 35s today also, or this evening also. So, but I just wanted to stop and, and give you an explanation of why and show you why, not just tell you why, but show you why you want to clean these parts up the best that you can. Why does this part keep flying over here, this shaker? These things keep ending up somewhere. So, that's all I wanted to talk about there. Um, if I come across anything else, I'll, I'll come on and, and tell you. I know I haven't been showing you the scraping. Well, let me show you the scraping on one of these because you got to do a lot of scraping. Like, for instance, this one where I said there's a pretty good draft angle here. So you're going to have to do some judicious scraping to, to clean that up. So that's one side. Let's clean up that up. Then you got to come to the other side and do the same thing. So you want to you want to try to make this edge equal to that edge. And then you got to clean up this box down here, this mismatch. That'll help it fit better. And it's one of the reasons, you know. I know there was at least one manufacturer, it wasn't Tangent, it was one of the main manufacturers quite some time ago when they started doing their ready to run road specific models. I had mentioned to a friend of mine, says why do you want to build a model? We're doing it for you. Well this is the exact reason why they will never ever be able to build a model for you because their assemblers are only that assemblers they're not hobbyists that care about the models we care about the models so we will take the time to do it. most people will not take the time to do this they're happy they're happy with with it out of the box and just go you know put it on the track and run it I like building the model and um, making it you know better than what it was. So I buy the undecorated kits. Not all the time. Sometimes I buy the ready to run stuff. But uh, not often. If I do it probably gets stripped and then rebuilt, cleaned up and rebuilt. But that's just the nature of the game. Now the nature of the game with uh, model railroading is, is we don't all have time to do all of this. I do because that's part of my hobby, is building the model, not building the layout. I got friends that'll build the layout for me. So <laughs> anyway, um, but uh, I like building the models, and, uh, and and that's my part of the hobby is the locomotives and now building the freight cars and such. So that's what I do. And I'm not saying that everybody should do what I do. I'm just trying to help those that want to do this to build yourself a better model. And that pretty much takes care of that part. So you saw me clean up a whole part. And you see all the scrapings all over all over the place. You can't see it, it's all over me too. So but that's that. So let me go back to cleaning up everything. The rest of this stuff is just pretty much basic. Clean up the sprue boogers, 
and um, scrape off the uh, mold parting lines. Once I'm done with that, I'll show you what needs to be done with, uh, with the metal parts. All right, one real quick thing I want to point out with the shaker brackets. The, they're pretty clean themselves. Let me see if I can zoom in on this a little bit. See if we can keep it in focus. Okay, the shaker brackets, you know, there's two things you need to do. One, there's a little sprue booger on the bottom. Just take some sanding paper or a sanding stick, clean that off. But on the back, there's two push pin marks. One of them is recessed, like this one, and the other one sticks out. So you want to make sure that you cut that one off that sticks out. Otherwise, I'll show you what it does. There we go. If you don't do that, do you see? I don't know if you can see it on there. Maybe you can see it over on this one. But right, right here, there's a gap. So the, the, the entire shaker bracket, and that's like that on, on almost all of them. This one's really bad. This one right here. The shaker bracket does not sit up against the bay fully. So cleaning the um, the uh, push the mold release pin marks off the back that uh, that will keep that from happening and you'll be much happier with the way it looks. So I'm going to get these done tonight these uh, draft gearbox covers and then I'm going to go back and work on my Jeep 35. So that I've got all from here down here done and I'll have these done and tomorrow or maybe later I will work on the rest of that stuff. All right, one little thing here on the draft gearboxes. On the inside of the draft gearbox where the, um, the mold release push pin mark is, there's a little bit of flash around the uh, circle of that. Um, what you might want to do, or what you will want to do, is you want to clean that off because it might interfere with the operation of your coupler. All right, all these parts are cleaned up. They're scraped clean. You can see all the the uh, scrapings all over the place. So that's all taken care of. So those parts are ready for assembly. Um, the next thing though, we're not done yet, is we need to clean up the metal parts. Let me just show you real quick what you need to do to these. These are all nicely, ooh, these ones actually come apart nicely. The last pack I had for this car that I just finished today these grab irons, <laughs> they were all magnetized, so they stuck together real nicely. <laughs> but these ones seem to be coming apart really good. Okay, so what we need to do to these, or what I need to do to these, is when they make these, these are nice grab irons um, and metal parts. They're bent perfectly for what you need. Nice and sharp, nice sharp bends, true and straight. Um, they're really, really well bent and, and such. The, the brake lines that go to the uh, air cylinder or the air reservoir and the, the cylinder and, and the triple valve, they fit perfectly where they're supposed to go. But what you want to do, let's just pick any one of these. You take, get rid of that. Now they're a little magnetized. Is let me zoom in. I don't know if you you can't really see it, but maybe zoomed in. Yeah, you can see the grab iron right here. But these ends where they where they nip them off the um, where they nip them off the machine or whatever or the machine that makes them. There's a tiny, very very tiny burr on the end, and that burr could make it difficult for you to get them into the holes in the in the plastic parts that you may need to go into. So it would take a, a uh, diamond file and I'll use a set of flat nose or duck bill or whatever you want to call them, pliers. And we'll just hold that 
firmly in the pliers. Now you don't want to put it out toward the edge too much. It might fly across the room. But this one's in enough, so you just want to clamp it down. And it's very easy, that's all you have to do. And that's it. That's all you have to do. But you have to go through all of these and do that. So I'll go ahead and get all that done. I'm going to separate these by the type of grab iron or or um, a couple of lift bar lever or, or brake line. I'll just separate them out and then I'll go through and, and clean them up with these tools. Uh, a real quick um, suggestion. These tweezers are just your standard like Revlon type tweezers you get at the uh, at the uh, like at Ulta or at Walgreens or something like that and typically they don't hold for crap they don't hold anything for crap um, it's because the ends don't come together perfectly but you can fix that you can take some pliers like these pliers or, or whatever you're using and you can get in there and just grab the tip and bend it up a little bit grab the other tip and bend it in a little bit and now they come together perfectly at the tip and then what I'll do is I'll take a, a file and I'll just go in and clean off any burrs that might be on the edges and stuff like that and then sometimes I'll come in and I'll just rough up that that tip a little bit so that they're not slippery and then I can go in and grab a grab iron and not be so afraid that it's going to fling across the room. So that's just a little tip. You don't have to bend them a lot, just enough so that they come together and they're tight on the ends. Okay, so all the parts are cleaned up. All the metal parts are cleaned up. Everything's ready. It's time to start assembling the model. So first thing I'm going to do going to put the weight in. Just put the weight down there. This is really nicely done with the bending in the uh, shape of the bays and stuff. I'm just going to put the self-tapping screw right down in and then cinch it. Not enough to strip it, of course, but just to get it tight so it locks in and won't come out anymore. Do the same with this side. There we go. That's it. So first thing we're going to glue on. Well, the only thing I didn't clean up yet is the is the hatch, but that's all right. I'll do that later. But you understand if the if you had actually gotten this part in the kit like you're supposed to, then it would have been cleaned up with everything else. But right now I have, before I put it on anyway, I've got to clean up all these where I broke the broke the part loose from the uh, painted and decorated model. All right, so now we're going to put the roof in. So we got to figure out which way this roof goes in, and it's got a B on it. So I guess that would be the break the break in. Wait, I got to see which one's the break. Oh, it doesn't matter. Uh, yes, it does. Just a second. Let me figure this out. There's only one way these things go. So the brake end is the side that doesn't have these in it. So let me put this. So this is the brake end right here. Right down here. So let's go put this down like that. And we got to get this top end, get it to snap down. Oop, there we go. Let's get this thing to. Let me get me something out here to. Gotta be careful not to break these end pieces. 
had this snapped in before. There we go. Okay. So what I what I what I use as a reference to make sure I get things put on right is is the car that's already built. So if we look at the the brake and yep, so where the latch goes will be on the let's see just a second I don't know which I think this is the break in down here doesn't really matter because right now everything is symmetrical so as long as I put the brake stuff down on this end I'll be correct with where the hatches are at hell so that's what you want to pay attention to look at like for instance, you see how this hatches? You got the latches here, 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 and here. And you got the hinges over here. Well, orient that the same way where you have all your brake parts down on this end. So if this is the brake end and it's facing away from you, all your latches are going to be on the left, all your hinges are going to be on the right. So now that we got that straightened out and when you look at that your the holes in the bracing are going to be on the right and the side that doesn't have the holes in the bay bracing is going to be on the left so let's double check that so the hinges are on this side I'm sorry hinges are over here latches are over here so this this side over here is a side that should have this side here should have the solid yep that's it so we're good everything's good all right so now it's time to go ahead and just start gluing this i use my preferred glue is the tamiya extra thin cement one of the suggestions I have for Tangent, the only suggestion really for this car, other than making sure the, all the parts are in the, in the kit, um, make this out of a little bit softer plastic. It'll glue up much, much nicer, but there's nothing I can do about that. And they're not going to listen to the modeler. So, let's glue this up, starting down on this end. Now if it looks like I'm using a lot of glue, I am. The reason I do that is because, like I mentioned just a second ago, a little bit ago, this plastic is not soft. It glues good, or it glues okay, but it's not soft. I'm just pressing the parts together to get a chemical bond. Being careful, there's a huge gap right there that you can't close up because these roofs are slightly narrower than the width of the body.
All right, so we got the roof all glued on. If you let this glue sit for just a little bit, maybe a minute or so, if you use that much glue, it'll soften the plastic enough so that when you squeeze it, it stays together. The gap doesn't come out anymore. So what I'm trying to do is get some ooze going, but this plastic's so hard. There's a little bit going there. I used enough glue there. This roof doesn't sit down even with the side with the sill on the top or the top cord there. So but we'll take care of all that. You'll see all that. I'm going to show you in just a second. How I take care of all of that. All right. Now I should have been ready, but I'm not, of course. But hang in there. All right. Now on the last one, on this one, on this one, I used fifteen thousandths um, rod down there. On this one, I'm going to use ten thousandths. Doesn't need fifteen thousands. Where's my ten thousands? Nope, not long enough. I need a full length one. Ooh, I don't have a lot of this left. I'm gonna have to order some. There we go. That's not gonna fit all the way down, but it'll do the job. So what we're gonna do. I'm going to take this rod. I'm going to melt it into the into the seam. So you get the idea of what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this 10 thousandths rod and fill that seam all the way down on both sides. So let me go ahead and get that done. I'm not going to um, make you watch me do all of that and then we'll get back to doing some other assemblies. So the roof is on and I've got the weld or a, uh, a plastic weld going all along the seam of the roof here and here. So I'm going to let that set up and we'll come back and we'll clean that off. In the meantime, what I'll do is over with all these parts, I'll start organizing them into the ends that they go on to for the sub-assemblies. The nice thing about the kit is you can assemble the end cages off of the car itself, and when it's all done, you can put them onto the car. And that, this is the steps that are really important on understanding the sequence of the way they go together. So remember, on your um, on your um, roofs, you got to remember which end is which now, because this is glued on, so we don't know which end has the B on it. But we do know that if the break end is away from you, then the latches are on the left side. So that means the latches are on this side. So the break end is down here. Now, what you can always do is you can just take a pencil. <coughs> And you can just write a nice B right up on top there. And um, when you're all done, you can erase it or whatever. But that way you know you've got something there. It's barely, you can barely see it, but you know it's there to know that that's the break end because you don't want to make that mistake. All right, so in the last session, we glued the roof on and you saw me putting down the bead to seal up the, the, whole, the, the gap in the roof in the body. 
So I'm not going to worry about this smoothing this down yet. Um, I'm going to let it cure up a little bit. I mean, it's probably cured now. It's been a few hours, but I just need a reason to say let's uh, let it cure up some more. But right now we're going to put the body or the base supports in. So we got these pieces here. You do not want to glue the triangular pieces together yet, otherwise you're going to be in um, some serious pain when you go to put it together with the, uh, the uh, uh, end cages. So what I've gotten here is I have everything broken out to where it goes. So this is all the break end parts, and this is the, the, uh, the A end parts. So I've got those all set so it's easy just to get to them and, and put them together. But right now, let's put these together. So you've got a um, female side and a male side. So we're just going to put the uh, tabs together. And we're just going to glue those together. That part's easy. Now I'll just make sure that they're as even as possible all the way around. Squeeze them together. Get out my sanding block. Alright. So that's there and these holes are they're um set up so you can't put this in wrong. You've got the hole that's out further on the bay and a hole that's in tighter on the bay. And that's what you got here, in tighter and out further. So this should fit nicely, oh, wrong way. See, you can't put it in the wrong way. Right like that. Now, here's where you get the gaps. So when you fit one side up by itself, I mean, look at that gap. Look at that gap, right? Right there. That's a pretty healthy gap, but we'll fill that in. That's not a problem. We'll take care of that. So I'm going to hold this down tight, and I'm going to glue it in. Put copious amounts right down in here. and down in here. And this, where this gap is, it's probably not going to do anything, but we'll get some glue in there anyway. And on this side, we got a huge gap right over here, and not so much over there. All right, so let's just press these in. There we go. Okay, there's one. Now we'll put the next one together. So we got what used to be pins, but it looks like the factory felt like, you know, the assembler didn't need pins anymore, so they broke all the pins off. And we got the side with the holes, so... These guys all got surgically removed, and we'll just have to line it up and glue it. There we go.
I mean, I just said a, a disparaging thing towards tangent about their factory removing the pins. I'll probably get a nasty gram from one of the tangent uh, groupies or fanboys saying I'm not being fair to tangent. I mean, it's not tangent's fault, it's a factory. They felt that I didn't need pins, which actually I don't. I'm just being sarcastic, guys. Don't take that to heart. <laughs> Not too long ago, I was told by a certain manufacturer, because I said I, I, I brought something to, um, um, what do you call it? Uh, to light about their product you know helping my fellow modelers out just telling them you know hey when you buy these you know look at this and if they're not right contact the manufacturer and you know get a new part or something like that and I got a nice a nice uh, email from the manufacturer telling me that I should just be happy that they're making these toys for us so that we can play with them basically telling me to shut up and just be happy that you know they're there you know the manufacturer gods are there and we're supposed to accept anything that they give us whether it's good or bad just take it nah I don't think so anyway this one's ready to glue in so we get this here this one fits a little bit better not so much gap. Maybe that's why they took the pins off to show me that if you use the pins on it, you get bigger gaps. If you don't use the pins, you don't get that big a gap. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> but now we'll just glue this all together. Like I said, use copious amounts on these ends so it gets down in there. Now we'll glue the braces. Oh, there's enough of a gap there that needs to be filled. All right. So, we've got the center brace in, or the bay, the braces for the bays. So we can let that set. And now, it's time to put together the uh, end cages. So, let's go the break end first. Now, I said you don't want to glue these together yet, and there's a reason for it, and I'll show you what that reason is. If you were to glue these together, this piece fits into this notch and around the bolster so you gotta fish it in there now if you had this glued together you wouldn't be able to fish that in there then you take this piece with the holes in it this one they left the pins in it for me and you gotta do the same thing for this side you need to fish it in there Not an easy task. Now let me see if I can hold it together and put it in there. Because last time I glued it together first and I couldn't get it in there so I had to break it apart. Why won't these pins line up? Huh. It's because the pins don't line up. There we go. There we go. Okay, let's see if we can't. Spread that apart. Nope. 
All right, so it's got to have, this is like a little puzzle you have to work at. So there's that piece. Maybe I'm missing something, I don't know. Maybe you have to break the piece like it's breaking right now. There we go. See that piece. Now I gotta figure out if I can get the pins together. I think I gotta break the pins off to get this thing to go in. And there's a pin in there. Okay, see now, I got it in there, but this piece is almost broke off. But we can just squeeze that in around there and hold it in place there. And now, it's together. So now we can glue it. That wasn't fun, but it worked. Nothing broke. It's all integrally tied together now. piece together. Got a little bit of a scraping in there. Alright, so now let's see if we can't hold that together. Get some glue in there. Soften up the plastic a bit. And then squeeze it together. Like so. Hold it there. And now, let's glue it to the platform on the end down here. Get some glue underneath there. Make sure you get it centered under this platform. So that we have equal draft gearbox sticking out on both sides. There, now we can fully glue it all the way around. Parts sure don't fit nicely together. This part is higher than this part. But you won't see that when this is all done. Right now I'm centering the draft. I'm sent this is part of the draft gearbox right here. So I'm centering the top of it over this plate here so it's not crooked or out one way or the other. And then let's get some glue down in here. I'm gluing all the joints all the way around. There we go. So let's see how that fits into this end. Wait, have we got the right end? So, latches on the left. Okay, so that means... Oh, there's my B right there. That's right, I wrote a B up there. So this is the break end. So this will go here and here. And these posts will fit up just fine.
Okay, and that will fit this fine. All right, we'll just keep doing fits as we go. Now I let that dry, and uh, let's see what's next. All right, so we have this piece here, the end sheet. This will go right like that. Just like that. So, what we want to do, first thing we want to do, I forgot about this. This piece of pipe is too long. So we need to figure out how much to cut off. So what you want to do is, it goes, let me zoom in on here. All right. So, you'll notice it has four pins on it. One, two, three, four. And those four pins go into these four holes. One, two, three, four. But you can't cut it if you put it into the, you can't put it into those holes. So offset it to two pins on the outside. You see how it is? Now you know where to cut it. Right there. So now I can come in, just take a sharp knife, cut that off. Now we don't want to glue that on yet because we have to put our end sheet on. So what we're going to do is we're going to put our end sheet on. We're going to glue that down. Make sure that end sheet up is up against that. Make sure it's not crooked, because it's looking pretty crooked here. And to make sure it's not crooked, let's go back here, test fit it, and that end sheet should slide. See these grooves? One here. And one over here, right, I'm sorry, one here, and one here. This end sheet goes in front of those. Let's go wide again here. All right, so that seems to fit just fine. Now we can glue the bottoms in properly. That one, and that one. There we go. Make sure everything's flat and tight. And what I'm checking for is how these, this triangular piece fits these corner posts. And it looks like everything's lining up just fine. All right. That looks good. Okay, so let's pull that out. As you can see, as the assembly goes together, this is getting pretty strong now. Now, there, 
I did when I glued the um, draft gearbox on. There's a little ooze there. All you have to do is let that um, harden. You know, it's soft right now, and if it's soft, it, it won't cut off easily. But once you let that harden, you can take a sharp knife and just slice it right off. Okay, so we got that in place. Next up, we need, let's put on our... I don't want to put that on yet. Oh, let's put this on here. So now, remember, we cut the end off here. And put that right in the hole. And it's four mounting holes. And it fits right up against the back of that uh, the tri the um, end support. So it looks like it's going through nicely. All right. So there we go with that. Now, let's take our triple valve support. And this There's two holes right here, so that goes in there, and it goes up against, there's a, a gusset there, it goes up against that. So let's get that, let's get that all. Square it up. All right, that looks good. So let's just let that harden or cure. Last time I did this, I didn't let it cure and it kept moving around. So before I put the triple valve on, I'll let it cure. So the next thing is this. cylinder that will go right it's supposed to go right there and it's supposed to go right up against the end of this where the chain is so let's Put that in there, make sure that it okay, let's just tack it in place and then we can move it. Okay. Okay, it's supposed to go like that. This chain piece needs to bend up a little bit more. So it can meet it. Oh, that needs to bend down a little bit. And, oop, a little too much. Okay, so now let's get this all glued in properly. There we go. So now let's get more glue on there. All right, while that's setting up, let's make sure it's straight. And 
and it's not crooked or anything. It looks good. Okay, so now we got the brake cylinder on. The air reservoir. That. Forgot where that goes. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Oh, it goes up on the wall. Yeah, it goes up on the wall over here. So this... go up on here. We've got a little bit of plastic here. And I didn't clean off. There we go. Alright, so that We'll go up on the wall here. If you have a, here's a little trick that I've seen the military guys use. Um, when you're cleaning up parts, you get a little bit of, like, uh, plastic slough or whatever on it. Just take a little bit of cement and just go right over it. It'll smoothen it out and clean it up real nicely. So you don't have to get in there with a knife and clean it out. There we go. It'll just melt that little piece of plastic and it'll disappear. All right, so we got the brake cylinder on. And let's see what's next. So one of the assembly issues that I had while building this, we've already passed. And it was the major issue was putting this support on. So I had glued this all together first, and then I tried to put it on this um, bottom support, triangular support, and it just, nothing would go together. Everything was bending and twisting out of shape. So I had to break it apart, and then it went on, and you saw how it, it went together. So that's not too bad. So I'm going to go clean up some of that ooze. Okay, just smoothing it out a little bit. All right, all right. So everything's going to good, going together well right now. Let's do another test fit. Looks good. Everything's looking good. All right. Um, let's just go off and do, you know, right now I need to let this, this bracket dry probably for about an hour. Let that get good and solid before I start moving things around on it and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and just go put these shaker brackets on. Now the shaker brackets go with the curved, you got a curved edge and you got a straight edge. The curved edge goes up. Like that. So, let's go get ahead and get those on there. Get some glue on those. And 
and let that glue set up for just a second and then I'm going to tamp it down so that there's no gaps so that there's no gaps around the edges for those of you that want to weather you don't want gaps around the edges of these things or your washers will just suck right into them. Alright, let's go ahead and do this side. Now you notice I'm going all the way around the part and that's just to get a good seal. All the way around so, it, so you know you don't have any gaps. If I see a gap, I'll put a little bit of CA in there and that'll pull it together. Alright, so we got the shaker brackets on. Um, at this time, oh, what we can do here, we can take the draft gearbox. and we can screw it in place. That fits very nicely. Where did I put the screws? There we go. So we can go ahead and just screw this in place. See a little bit of fluff there. Okay, now we don't want to hit that with glue. Okay, so the draft gearbox is all in. That's taken care of. Let's go ahead and glue, I know I said I didn't want to touch it for a little bit, but it's, it's hard enough that I can glue this on and then we'll let that set. Now these holes in here are kind of closed up a little bit, so let me soften them. some more glue in there to soften those holes.
There we go. All right. Now all I want to do is I want to true up this triple valve and then just let it set. Ugh. Make sure it's parallel with the back wall. And it's parallel with the bottom, so it's not cocked one way or the other. And then I'll just put some extra glue on there. Behind it. I can get back there now. I'll just go underneath here like that. Okay. And it looks like it's not sitting straight up. All right, so now we'll just let that set. So I'll come back and we'll put some more parts in. All right, so all this stuff is dry now. It's solid, and I can start adding plumbing to it. So I need this plumbing piece, which will go from the far hall to the far hole in the triple valve. Now, I need to drill those out a little bit more. So what is the diameter of this stuff? It's 16,000. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to drill it out to about 20 thousandths. And that will give room for um, for the uh, CA to settle in and lock around it. So get myself out a drill bit here. I'm gonna go. Oh, let me. And we're gonna drill these out. All right, now there's one piece, um, this little valve thing here, it goes into that triple valve, and then there's another piece, this, that ties into the train line hose. So, this piece, I need to make sure, will fit positively, is a sanding stick. 
into that valve bit. So let me so to use the use one of the cars that's assembled. Figure out where all these parts go to. Now that piece measures out to almost 25,000. So we're going to take a 25,000 drill, but actually it comes out to that piece comes out to like 23,000. But we're going to take a 25,000 drill bit and drill out that valve piece so that when it's time to put this pipe in there I don't have to fight with it and it'll just slip right into there so let me just drill that out and let me test fit this just to make sure it fits good Oh yeah, it fits in there nicely. Okay, so we don't need to put that piece in yet. But what we do need to put in <coughs> is this valve here. I think. And this piece of wire will go into it. Let me make sure it fits into that hole. Yes, it does. So I should have glued this piece on while I was waiting for all that other stuff to secure but let's put this in there get some glue on it and while the glue's setting up we'll straighten it up Make sure it's standing vertical and the back of it is parallel to your back sheet there. All right, that's good. Let's put a little bit more glue on there. Okay. All right, so while that's curing, let's put these pipes in here. So this is the long one, and it is going to go, well, let's put the short one in first. So that would be this one. So you have a, a long leg and a short leg on both of them. The long leg goes into the triple valve, and the short leg goes into the air reservoir. And then on the long one, the same way. The long leg goes into the triple valve. <coughs> and the short leg goes into the air reservoir. Just like that. Alright, so let's get some CA on that. Now, a long time ago, <clears throat> I started using broken drill bits for my CA. And sometimes where they break, they don't grab CA a lot. I got to get the CA off of this thing. So what I do, see what's nice is the flutes will hold the CA. So what I do is I grind it to a little bit of a point. And that will give me a nice pinpoint area to get the CA in. <coughs> Let me see, can you see? No, you can't see that. Okay. Anyway, so what I do is I take some blue painter's tape. Let me put it right here so you can see. And I'm going to use thin CA. I need to get some new one. This uh, cap split. And I'm going to put a little bit of a bubble right there. 
Then I'm going to take my broken drill bit. I have a whole pile of these broken drill bits. I think I started using broken drill bits back in the 90s. Get some CA on there. And just put it in the hole. Let it wick. There we go. There we go. There. Now it's tight. Now, if I was a Chinese assembler, I'd be using, like, th if this was thick stuff, I'd be, you'd be have a nice big blob of that. <clears throat> and then I'd whip that up into a nice big blob like that, and I'd just glob it right on there. But I'm not a Chinese assembler, so won't be doing that. <laughs> Sorry, couldn't help it. <laughs> All right, so that one's in. So now I got to see where the next one goes to. All right, so that one goes there. Okay, so this one here, this goes to the air reservoir. I'm, I'm sorry, to the um, to the air cylinder brake cylinder I could see I could see what I'm doing there's a hole there okay let's get it into the hole this one goes into wait which hole does that go into that goes into that goes into this hole on the far side, bottom. All right, so let's put that in there. Actually, no, I got to put this in the brake cylinder first. There we go. And then that goes into the far side over here, right? So. There we go. Take some more CA. Wait, am I Chinese assembler or not? No, I'm not. Okay. All right. So that's in. Okay, now we're going to put the line that goes from this valve here, I think that's the retainer valve, into the hole that's in the middle, basically between the two air reservoir lines. So, I'm going to take that, and stick it into that hole there. And then we're going to come over on this side. And we're going to stick it into there. There we go. So now we're going to put some CA right back there. And we're going to get some CA strategically. I gotta sharpen this. Actually, what I do need to use is the the thicker stuff because the hole is well, that's a really small piece of pipe, so the hole is a little bit bigger. So I'm going to grab a little bit of this CA. There we go, and get it down into there. All right, now. Now what I need to do is take this little cylinder thing here 
and I need to put it into the hole on the bottom. So it goes right... Oh, I should have put that one in first. So, note, put this little cylinder thing in first. What I'm going to have to do is stick it in sideways and twist it up. There we go. And then twist it upward. Oh, wait, which way does it do? Does it hang down or hang up? Oh, it hangs down. Oh, good. Then no, you don't have to put it in first. It is upside down. Like so. Take some liquid cement and we'll get it glued in place. There we go. Get that hanging straight down. Okay, so that whole assembly is in place. So the next item we're going to do is we're going to put in the the train line hose. Now on the side, right down here, um, there's two holes, one here, one here on the draft gearbox. So this is why you don't want to glue this piece in yet. Uh, the sequence is put your train line hose in first. Those holes aren't big enough. Let me measure the size of these things. It's 19 thousandths. So we'll just go with 20 thousandths because you're going to glue that to the draft to the uh, to the draft gearbox. So let me get out my 20 thousandths, or actually it's 21 thousand 200. It's a it's a yeah 0 0.0213. Let me get that out. Let me drill those. Alright. So now I can stick that into there. And this part is just going to rest right up on the bottom. The, the pipe is just going to rest right up on the bottom there. Okay, and we're going to glue that on. Okay, now this is why you don't glue that pipe on yet. So we've got the train line hose in, and it's where it's supposed to be. The pipe's resting up on the bottom of the frame. Now you can take this pipe, and instead of it dangling out in the air like the Chinese assemblers like to have it, you can put it into this valve. We can rest it on top of the pipe it's supposed to go to, just like that, and then you can glue it in place up at the valve. And now it's resting on the pipe right there. Let me zoom in on that. 
See, now it's resting on the pipe right there like it's supposed to be. And so it looks like it's connected. Just like that. And then actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go ahead and glue this pipe down. Because when you take off the draft gearbox, you don't have to take it off all the way. There we go. You only have to flex it down enough to get the coupler in. So I'm going to go ahead and glue that pipe down. So the, the line will flex right here. All right, so now that pipe looks like it's supposed to be on there like, like that. Okay, so now we don't want to set this down like this anymore because you have your glad hand there. So you want to just put it upside down. Next up is we're going to put a bolster in. Now these bolsters have a specific way that they go. You'll notice there's bolt heads here and none back here. So the bolt heads will go forward like that. Now you'll also notice there's a hole here and there's a hole here. And there's a pin, a little pin type thing back here and over here. So, but I don't use those because the way this is molded, it kind of has a, uh, a an arced shape to it so you don't see this so I am going to flatten that so that when it glues down it's gluing the whole surface down there so I got a flat spot all across there now it'll be nice and solid um, let me zoom back out okay so I want to put the bolt heads forward and then this plate that's on the inside here will sit up against this flat area right here. Just like that. Now I'm going to hold that in place and I'm going to glue it. So it's nice and flat. The glue isn't getting up underneath there too good. Then I'm going to hold this side down. I'm going to put CA, some thin CA in behind it. And right across the front here, let that set up. Okay. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, but you have to pull it down and then hold it in place. There we go. And then just hold it there for a moment while the CA sets up. And now we have a solid planted bolster. And I'm going to put a little bit more thin CA across the ridge inside of there. front and back. Okay. 
All right. So now we have a solid bolster in there, and that's all set. And that now, what we can do is this piece can actually glue inside of here if we wanted to. So I could put this piece in here if I wanted to, but actually I don't want to do that. What I am going to do is I'm going to glue this piece onto here. Plastic there. So we'll take this piece. We'll put it right there. I'm just going to tack it ever so slightly right back here. Now this piece should be even with the end here and even with the end down here. So, and it should be even right along the bottom. So these two pieces should be flat across the bottom. So let's go ahead and glue one side. get it in there. Make sure the ends are even. Just like that. Now we'll do the other side. Making sure the ends are even. There we go. And now we can glue the t across the draft gearbox. And we can glue across the inside on the back. And we can put a little bit of glue right on these ends. There we go. Now I'll take some tweezers. And just make sure the bottoms are all flat across there. And there we go. So now we got our end cage. So that's basically done. These ladder supports, they'll go on after these parts will go on after this is glued to the uh, body. So I'm just making sure that everything is vertical, but it actually doesn't matter because once, once it goes to the body, everything will go straight anyway. All right. So that takes care of Yeah, okay. So that's one end of the end cage. Now we'll see if everything is still together there. Let's see how this goes together. Let me zoom out. Oh, I am zoomed out. So that will fit. There we go. Right in like that. And then these will go into their respective holes. I'll have to drill and clean out some of those holes, but it'll it'll look like that. And then we once this is all glued on, we can put the side cages on and uh, take care of that. All right, so we can set this thing aside. 
Well, this holding pins are holding in pretty good. There we go. So we can just set that aside like that. Oh wait, we can put this on. Let's go ahead and get that put on. Okay, so this. Go into these. Oop. What size are those holes? These holes aren't big enough for those. Twenty thousandths. So I'll use my twenty-one thousandths. this oh there we go oh. sometimes it's hard to hold these pieces let's see what we got here let me just get those holes softened up There we go. There's that one. And there's that side. Okay. Alright, that's glued down solidly. Now we got that and we can glue the chain right back here. It's supposed to go into it. There we go. Alright. That's done. <clears throat> and now we can put the brake wheel on. Of course, it doesn't fit into the hole, so let's uh, take a little bit of the slough off of the back. Sometimes you miss cleaning up some of this stuff. And this thing measures out to be 27 thousandths. So I will use a 20. I think it's less than that. Let me try something. Let me use a 26 thousandths. Oh, that should do it. That should open up the hole there. All right. <coughs> Let me use some cement, soften the hole up. And the brake wheel goes right in there. Now we want to true up the brake wheel, make sure it's... It's not skewed. All right, so that and oh wait, got one more piece. You can put in the uh, the crossover. All right, let me get out some more CA. 
clean off my tool here. All right, let's get some CA. There we go. All right, so that end cage is done. So let me take a break. I'll go in and get something to eat. I'm getting kind of hungry here. And uh, next up is we'll put together the other end cage. So we got the we got the brake side put together. Now it's time to put the A end together. So the parts for that are this, that. That, 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 this, and that, these two pieces, and the crossover. So, let's get that done. Now, like with the B end, first thing we've got to do is get these triangle supports on there. So, we'll line up... Uh, this part again. So the first one, whoop, wrong way. <laughs> first one is easy to get in. The second one is the one that's a little bit more difficult. Getting this See I thought like for instance I thought that you could put these together and then go at an angle like this. Maybe this will work. Maybe not. Ah, there we go. That worked better. So squeeze them together and let these two pieces flare out as they go around the bolster. So that actually worked pretty good there. Huh. Well, it's good. Glue these parts together. We'll get that, we'll get this end glued together after we get all this up here together. So quite a bit of a mismatch between these two edges, but that's underneath. But I think that contributes to the gaps that we see in the models. There's a pretty good mismatch on this end right here not much we can do about it there we go okay so we got that so if we got them if we clean up the mismatch here you produce a mismatch here on this angle so just gonna have to deal with it right All right, so now again, I need to line up the bolster. So let me hold that together and glue it, and then I'll center it on the frame plate. All right, doesn't want to stay together, so let me get some glue underneath here, and then we'll just hold it all together and 
center it. Bunch of ooze coming out there because I squeeze it really hard. Well, this side doesn't want to set down. There we go. Now we'll just hold that for a second. All right, so that's all glued together. Okay, so the draft gearbox back piece is glued together. Now let's get every joint glued. Okay, that's it. All right, so that piece is taken care of. Now we can put the back plate on. Oh, before we do that, again, we have to cut <clears throat> this line right here because it's too long. So let's see what we can do. Well, this one doesn't have it so that we can... Uh, so let's just go ahead and stick it in the holes here. Let it flex over to one side. See how it's <clears throat> see how it's flexing over to the side there. So I'll just come in and I use some PBL nippers. And we will actually I don't need the nippers, I can just take a knife. Come right down here and cut it. There we go. Now let me straighten that out. wacky okay <clears throat> now we can put the back plate on and glue that in place Okay, nice and straight. Now we can go ahead and glue the bottom edges. Okay, so that portion is taken care of. Now we can go put this back on, make sure it's this rod is straight. There we go. Now you don't want to push those pins all the way into the holes, otherwise they will be the whole device will be crooked. So this portion back here determines how high off the plate that part will sit.
And now, continuing to try to see if I can glue that vine in there. No, it's not going to glue in. This little bugger just does not want to go straight. That's about as good as it's going to be. <coughs> the only other thing you could do is cut that off, drill it out, put a piece of wire in there. But I don't think that that is going to matter. There we go. That's taken care of. <coughs> so now we can screw in our draft gearbox. The draft gearbox lid. <clears throat> there we go. All right, now <clears throat> let me drill out these holes again. I think this drill bit's too big. What do we got here? 26. Yeah, that's not a 26. This one, <clears throat> you have to do a little bit of careful bending. That one's 12. <clears throat> Let's get the... Get the 12 out. There we go. <clears throat> now, too small. I use fifteen. Probably too small still. Yeah. That's all. Right. I'll just soften it up when I put in but let me show you this if you notice this the first time I was on there I was like how does this go in it doesn't go in like that I mean it goes in like that but that's pointing to the side so you have to bend this um, train line hose 90 degrees so what you can do is you're gonna grab the end of the hose at the at the pipe or at the valve and you're going to twist it 90 degrees with the hopes that you don't break it no nope, still got to go further I like that. Now, I twisted this pin. There we go. Then what I do is I kind of shore it up a little bit with some cement. All right. So now you got your pipe looking like that. <clears throat> so that piece... We'll go up and over. Well, it went in the holes and then it came out. Glue those in.
And this line goes through that hole. There's some tension on this. He should have put a on this this little bracket right here. Let me zoom in on this. All right, on this little bracket right here, they should have had a pin that goes into into the top of this plate because right now you have to butt weld it, and that's not gonna when you got tension on something. Butt welding is not a great thing. Okay, so I bent it enough. So this piece of wire. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm off uh, camera here. So I was bending this over. I needed to bend this this vertical piece here because it was pulling it back. Had tension on it, pulling it back. So I had to bend it over, stress it a little bit. And now my wire, or my piece goes through the hole, and I can comfortably butt weld this to the bottom here. Let it set up for a second. And there we go. Okay, so that piece is in, and you got pipe coming through the back here. And what I want to do is I want to cut that piece of pipe flush with the back here. There we go. And that takes care of that piece. Now we can put the bolster on the bottom. And remember the bolts go forward. So we're going to put it in there like that. Okay, and now we're going to glue it in. Glue it all the way around. Make sure it's up nice and tight against the bolster or against the frame. Make sure it's straight. There we go. And I'll go ahead. These ones I don't need to use CA on. I the last ones I sanded flat. These ones I didn't. So these ones contact the plate very nicely. And uh, the bolster's in. Okay, so that piece is almost done. Now we'll get this on the front here. Just going to put a little tack in here so to hold it, and then I can line everything up. Make sure these corners are lined up. See, there's an ang this angle continues out on this end brace, so you just want to match up those angles. So get some glue on here. Alright, 
So everything's matched up. Now I can glue the whole piece together. And get it all lined up. Make sure the bottom edges line up together. Straighten this up, it's kind of at an angle. There we go. Get some more glue on the inside edge here. Now there's a hole in this piece right here but nothing goes in it. At least nothing that I can see on the other cars. Nope, it's just left open. So you can either fill it or leave it as it is. I fill it and to do that I use I think it was 20 thousandths rod. Just cut a small piece of 20 thousandths rod off. <clears throat> Doesn't quite fit through perfectly, so you gotta soften, soften the hole with some glue. Make sure that the end is squared up. And then I kind of just chamfer the end and go through the hole. Stick it through. Nip it, let it dry, and then come back and clean it up. What I'll do is I'll push it through till it's just a little bit sticks out the top that I can clean up. And we'll let that dry and take care of that. And the only thing left here is to put on The crossover. I can hold it. Let me get some tape out, get some CA on there. Put a little drop of CA on the tape. Clean up my applicator drill bit. <clears throat> and then get it glued in place. There we go. <clears throat> now we can do a test fit on this end. That pin's not lined up. There we go. 
There we go. And everything seems to work just fine. Making sure this bottom plate is parallel to the car body. And that is the other end plate, or the other end cage. So now, we can actually go ahead and glue these together. But, before we do that, because I don't want to handle with all of these delicate parts hanging down, so we're going to pull that one out. And we're going to pull that one out. And we're going to fill. Fill these gaps in in here. So we're going to do that with fifteen thousandths rod, plastruck fifteen thousandths rod. Get a piece out. I got my little screwdriver. I've had this screwdriver since I think nineteen eighty, about nineteen eighty. It came in a uh, Tamiya uh, 1 16th scale Sherman tank kit, the uh, um, remote control or motorized kit. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this rod, like for instance, this has got a big old gap right in here. So I'm going to lay that rod Let's see if I can get it at an angle you can see. So I'm going to lay that rod right on the, uh, you know, i got to do it this way. Sorry guys, you're not going to be able to see this, but I'll show you when it's done. So I'm going to lay the rod right into the gap, put some glue on it, lots of glue on it. Because I want it to melt to go down in that gap. There we go. Take the screwdriver, press it up into there. And then cut at the end where the brace or the flange is, just like that. So now you'll see I have this in there. I'm going to put some more glue on it. A little too much. Yeah. And I'm going to press it into it again. Okay, so when that all sets up, I'm going to uh, come back and clean it up with a knife and stuff. So instead of you watching me do that to all of these, I'm going to go ahead and get that done, and then I'll come back and uh, assemble the end cages. All right, right now I've got the the bays all cleaned up. I've got the the um, uh, gaps filled and uh, them all scraped and sanded uh, smooth. So I've got that all taken care of. Now I did switch to using 10 thousandths rod for that because some of the gaps weren't as big as I thought they were. So that worked out. Loaded them up with glue and pressed them in. Then when I was done and I let the glue cure and dry, if you don't let the glue dry long enough when you do your scraping, you're going to tear the plastic rather than scrape it smooth. So had to wait a while and then I got in there, used a chisel blade and just scraped it smooth. So that's all done. Now it's time to take care of the, the joint earlier that we filled with 10 thousandths plastic rod. Now, if you go and you try to slice this with a new blade, many times what will happen is the blade will go under the rod and lift it out even though it's glued tightly in so instead of that I scrape it 
So I put this blue tape on here right where the curvature meets the flat on the edge so that I don't scrape into the curvature and I don't scrape into the, there's some very fine weld lines like there's one right here that goes down and meets that flat. So I don't want to, I want to try to keep away from that. Now when you put the walkway or the running board up on top it pretty much covers most of that up but I don't want to get into that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start and I'm just going to start, this is a new blade and I'm just going to be scraping at it and I'm going to scrape it till I take all the gloss off And then you know you're even all the way across. Take all the gloss off the plastic. Make sure you got your knife at a good angle, otherwise it'll chatter as it's going across. So I'm not going to make you watch me do that all the way down, but that's the process. When I'm done, I'll come back with a sanding stick and I'll wet sand all the way down. So let me go ahead and get that done. You saw the process. I use a brand new blade and I just scrape till I take all the gloss off the top of the flat surface here. I don't cut into the curved surface and I just scrape it down and then I'll sand it. Well, I've got everything sanded here and here, so the lit or the roof is all taken care of. The seam is, is filled, it's scraped and sanded, and everything's blended nicely. I just want to show you another quick tip. I don't know if people know about this, but you know that you can do wet sanding, of course, by taking you know some water, put it on the surface, get your sanding stick, and just get in there and, and wet sand. But you can also wet scrape. So put some water there and you'll get a very nice smooth surface with that as well. Like I need to level off this, this joint right here. The only, the only thing with wet scraping is you can't really see what you're scraping or where your blade is making contact. So that takes care of that joint. Now I can just go back and also wet sand it. Just like that. So I got a nice smooth joint there and do the same thing for this side. And it's all taken care of. So the roof is on. We've got the joints filled, and it's time to put the end cages on. So let me clean up real quick. I've got water and scrapings and everything else all over the place. So let me clean up, then we'll put the end cages on. All right, so 
We've got the uh, everything ready to go together. Now, remember I put a B on one of these ends for the break end? Well, that B is gone now because I sanded it. But there's another way you can tell which is the B end when you've got a, a um, your, your body like this because it could go either way. You know, one, you got the holes here. But another thing is, you see these two holes here? And you got a single hole here? The two holes is the B end. So that's how we know. And also remember your, your latches go to the left when the B end is, uh, you see these, these wider spaced, let me zoom in on that. You see these wider spaced lugs here and the narrow spaced lugs here? This is the latch, this is the uh, hinge. Just uh, another thing, but this is your your B end right here with these two holes. So if that's the B end, we're going to the, take the break end and we are going to fit it up in here like so. I'm going to press it in place. Everything's in good order and we're just going to go ahead and glue it. Remember I said lots of glue down in here. This glued at the corners. And we'll make sure those corners are where they're supposed to be. This one's bowing a little down, so I need to hold it up there. Of the glue sets. Now if that continues to do that, oh that's good. Yep, yeah, there we go. Alright. So that end is in. There's a gap where the where the vertical sheet meets the slope sheet, so we'll fill that in with some ten thousandths. So let's go ahead and do that. So I've got some ten thousandths. Alright, let's see. And to do that, I have a a nasty paintbrush here so I can get down into the cage because so I can't do that with this brush. Let me just cut this. There we go. Glue on there. 
That's all right. Let me just get it tapped in place. All right. I'm just pressing it into place right now. There. We'll let, let that um, glue cure and we can come back and clean it up a little bit. So let's go ahead and do this end. Everything looks good. Let's go ahead and glue it. corners get that one situated properly Hold that for just a little bit. Let's do the other side. This side kind of wants to stick out a little bit. Don't know what's causing that. This side is okay over here. This side lined up perfectly. This side just doesn't want to line up perfectly. I might have to get a 
some CA on there. Yeah. That'll be all right. Let me get some CA on there to hold that one in place. It's not lining up properly. Should I do the Chinese glue blob? There we go. Get that set up. All right. That is in place. Like, why is that ladder crooked? It was because it was on the other side of the bracket. All right, so that's all in place. That's all taken care of. Next thing we can do is we can put on these side plates here. You've got a you've got a bracket on the back that goes down and it goes over this rib right here. A little bit of slough there. Just like that. So there's one bracket. Okay. Let's get the next bracket. So make sure I got the right end. Nope. There we go. This one. sure it's trued up in there. All right. I'll do this other side. This bracket, something in there that's causing it not to sit well, so I need to melt it. Put some CA in there to fill that gap. Here we go. Okay. And 
put this last one on. As you'll notice up here, all our parts are disappearing, which means the model's almost done. Put some glue on there. All right, so that's taken care of. Now what's really nice is on my last model, I had to fill the gaps in these gussets here and on the ends. But on this one, they seem to have filled up pretty good. This one I need to fill. That one's good. That one's good. And that one's... I need to fill a little bit right at the bottom there. So, I wonder if I can press that in enough to glue it. Hey, that'll work. That works. I don't need to fill that one. How about this one? This one needs to be pressed in. That'll work. And this one, I think, is way too well. Let's see. Looks like it's working. Yeah, that worked. I don't have to fill it. Okay. So, we've got almost everything on here. Now, we can, we can put the gates on. A little slough off of there. All right, you can't mistake how these gates go on. He's got holes and tabs. So like for instance, this one can only go that way. Remember, you want to glue all the way around so you have good contact and no gaps. All right, there's that one. Let's do the next one. Got a little bit of... There we go. And this one will go in the opposite direction.
All right. Next up are the corner ladders. Now these pinholes are not all the way through. So I do need to open those up. And I'll open those up with a 15 thousandths drill bit. And to get this ladder, this step piece to stay up, we're going to put some CA on it. There should be a some kind of a pin mechanism there, but CA's dried up already. Using thin CA. There we go. And now we can reinforce that with this corner brace. And we'll see the CA that in there also. There we go. Let's just back up that joint a little bit. Oh, that's good. Okay, so we've taken care of that one. Now, I'm going to do the same thing for these other four, and there's nothing different, so I don't think you need to, I don't think I need to bore you with that, and I'll come back and we'll work on the next step. All right, so I've got the side ladders on. Everything is nice and solid in place, locked down. I had to glue the braces with CA, which is fine. The, the joints are very, very strong. So that's cool. Now, <clears throat> there's a couple things left to do. And one of them is to put the train line hose on. Now, my last one, I made it out of a 19,000s brass wire because this pipe just disintegrated when I tried cutting it off of these trees. So I don't know what the process would be to successfully cut these off these trees, but we're going to give it a try. Um, looking at it, I'm going to not try to clean them up. I'm going to tr I'll clean them up after it's on the model. I did scrape the parting line off of the uh, pipe, at least most of it that I could see. But typically, I try to cut where the tree is up against the part. But instead, I'm going to cut where the tree 
barely connects. Okay. 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 I use the least amount of force to cut this thing off. Now we got this end. Let's go right up against the pipe there. And let's go right up against the pipe. Okay, success so far. This end, let's see what we got going here. I got to cut up against the pipe this way. So we're going to cut up against the pipe with the flat side here. And also, there we go. Look at that. Just take your time and all things will be good. <clears throat> Hopefully. Okay. So we can actually glue that. This goes this way here all right so this goes into here all we have to do is get one glued in and then we can take care of the rest. I think the... I don't think the holes are deep enough. Not only that, but there's some... I'm going to pull that off. I'm going to drill these holes a little bit deeper. And they'll go through. That's all right. Then we're going to sand them. All right, now, now we can put that in there and it'll sit nice. It'll sit the way that it's supposed to. I'll put this first one in again. Put the next one in. Next one in. Put the next one in. The other reason I liked using the brass wire was it ran nice and straight. Oh, this has to come up over the top. There we go. Let's get this one in.
Alright. And then let's glue this pipe in place. To where it's supposed to be. Let me bend it out a little bit. Ah, uh, there we go. Let's bend it over. That pipe doesn't even go where it's supposed to go. So when you put it where it's supposed to go, it all it flexes all of this other pipe out. So what I will do is I will bend this pipe right there. Hopefully that won't cause any problems. So you want to get this pipe to run straight. But because it's plastic, it doesn't want to do that. And this needs to go that way. That needs to go that way. That needs to bend that way. And it needs to come out that way. There's a crack happening in the pipe. Ooh, crack pipe. Alright, I need to cut this just a little bit so it'll snug down right on the other end of that pipe. Come on, there we go. Then I'll shore it all up with glue. Ugh. This thing is nasty. Need to cut it a little bit more, otherwise it throws the pipe out of whack. There we go. This you got to tweak all this stuff around to get it to run straight. Sticking to the tweezers rather than the that pipe to run there. What I'm trying to do, there's a crack right here. And I'm trying to be very delicate with this so that it doesn't break apart. And what's happening is where this pipe comes over the top underneath the support. It's pushing this pipe up. So I gotta bend this pipe so that it'll, it'll naturally run appropriately. And the glue isn't wanting to glue. Because it's not sitting. There we go, let's see if that'll work. Okay, just got to get it all shored up here. Ugh. I'm 
This is disgusting. All right, now I'll just put some CA on the joint that cracked. Blend it all together, hopefully. Okay, so that's all taken care of. Now let's make sure everything's running straight. And now this side doesn't want to go where it's supposed to go. What do I need to do here? It's supposed to go like that, but if you look at it, it causes, if I put it the way that it's saying that it's supposed to go, you see how the pipe goes up into the frame? So I need to do some more fiddle farting around with this thing. So this one wants to do what? This one wants to come out more. So let me flex this one out more. And let me cut the end off a little bit. What he should have done is put a pin in there instead of letting it flounder around. Let me, let me work on that and I'll show you what I do to fix that. All right, the way that I fix that, let's see, oh, there you go, you can see that in there. Right here, underneath the hole, you can see a white piece of styrene. So I put that, un I glued that underneath the hole and then rested the pipe on top of that so it lined up with the pipe on, on this side of the, of the face. So that's all taken care of. So now, I'm just going to let that all cure, and uh, I think, I don't know, I have to, I'll have to check photos, but you see these little, let me zoom in a little bit more, you see these tabs that hang down? I don't think those are supposed to be there, I think that's part of the sprue, but I will check that and make sure that I don't cut off something that I'm not supposed to cut off. So let me check some photos. And I'm going to clean up the pipe with some CA. I'm not, not CA, with some liquid cement. get any frillies off of it any mold parting line that I may have missed I 
All right. Now let me just make sure all these posts are straight. Because if they're not, the pipe's not going to run straight. Now the nice thing about these tabs is you can use them to straighten out your pipe. You can grab onto them firmly. And you can use them to straighten out your pipe. Make sure that everything... Is running true okay so I'm gonna just let that set up now when you handle your your hopper here you don't want to grab it on the sill you want to grab it top and bottom like that you don't want to grab it here so you want to grab it like that and we're just gonna set it on its side we're gonna let that all dry let me look down the side to make sure all these brackets are even and not slightly askew all right okay so let's just let that rest let it all cure up I'll go check on these brackets make sure I don't need those tabs and uh, we only have one thing left to do and that's to put the grab irons on okay so one more thing I have to do before I put the um, grab irons on and that is to make it so that when I put the coupler lift bar metal part on I don't have to glue it on so what I do is I cut a little strip of 15,000 styrene doesn't have to be perfectly sized it just has to be enough to cover where the bracket for it is for the coupler lift bar is and we'll just straighten that out so when I Cut it. There we go. And then we'll just squeeze it on there a little bit. All right, we'll just let that dry. I'll do it again on this end. All right, let's let that dry and when it's all done, when it's all cured and everything, we can shape it. So I'm going to take a break for a moment and we'll come back and I'll get the grab irons put on. All right, it's time to put the grab irons on. I've got them all sorted out up here by um, their type. So we've got uh, the sides here, we've got the ends here. <clears throat> this goes on the end, these are on the, on the roof walk. These ones. I think there's too many of these. I think they put more in the pack than I need. But these go on the ends, these go on the ends, and then what you can't see over here, the coupler lift bars. <clears throat> so let's do the coupler lift bar first. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut slightly ahead of the notch. There, and now I'm just going to trim it. <clears throat> flush with the the kit part or the the kit there there and there Okay, <clears throat> I'm going to round the end of it just to make it look a little bit more like it's supposed to be there.
There we go. <coughs> now I've got a 20 thousandths drill bit here. And I'm just going to put a hole right through where the... I poke my finger right through where the uh, notch is. Alright, so I got a hole there. Now, what I'm going to do is, let me zoom in here a little bit. Oh, a little too much. There we go. Okay, there's a notch right in the bottom of the draft gear box here. I'm going to drill a 12 thousandths hole right through. That notch. Just like that. So you see the drill bits going through. All right. Now we're going to take a coupler lift bar. Let's see. This is, should go. Oh, wrong way. There we go. This should go. I got to get my bearing straight on this. <clears throat> Just like that. So we're going to thread that through. Through there, and we're going to fit this pin. Let's get this through here. Get it rotated around, and we're going to fit that pin right into that hole. Stop rotating. And grab the corner here. Ugh. <clears throat> Sometimes these things just don't want to cooperate. Here we go. So now that's in, and if I ever need to take it out, just take it right on out. So that's that's it. Oh, sorry. There we go. So now I got that in there. So now I can work on the other stuff. All right, so <clears throat> that was one thing I wanted to show you real quick there. So let's get a piece of tape out. Start putting these grab irons in. Put a dab of, uh, you won't see this, but you've seen it before. Put a dab of CA, thin CA. Already cleaned up my application tool so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start I'll start with these side grabs here and those are these straight ones so you got the long the long leg there and actually Before we do that, I forgot, I need to drill these out. So instead of you watching that, let me just go ahead and drill all these holes out and then we'll install the gram irons. All right, there's one part I forgot the glue, and that's these at the top up here. So that's easy enough to do. Just take some glue, put it in there. There we go. There.
little ooze came out. Well, that end's done. <coughs> All right, so those are all glued and everything's drilled. So we'll go ahead and start <coughs> with this side. So we'll start on these side ladders here. All right, so I'll get myself uh, tweezers here. Side ladder. Wait, those don't go in there. Those go in here. Sorry about that, guys. It's like something doesn't seem right. Oh, I forgot to drill that hole. Like there's no hole there at all. And now is when you want to, <coughs> excuse me, set the, uh, Set the ladders out so that they're so that they're not crooked. You get the first one in where it's supposed to be. <coughs> get some CA on there. There we go. And now we can use that one and look down it to line up all the other ones. <coughs> so we got this one next. This one has the long leg on it. So we're going to look down it. Make sure it's sticking out properly. There we go. And we'll get some glue on that. So that's the process of just putting the ladders on. So I don't think you need to see me put all these ladders on, but it's the same process. Just get it set, get your first one set, and then just start adding the other ones and gluing them as you go. Just making sure that they look down the ladder this way and make sure they all line up. Same with this way. You can make sure they all line up. So I've got all the grab irons in on this end. So let me go over which ones go where. And remember I said there was I thought they gave me too many of, of these ones here. Well, I was wrong. There's the right amount. <laughs> so anyway, first off, on the side, 
On the side ladders, you get these ones here. I don't know if you can see that. They have a short leg and a long leg. And they're straight. On the end, on these end ladders, you get this one, which is a drop grab with a long leg and a short leg. And you also get this one, which is a drop grab. It has an extra long leg, or a longer drop side, and a, a long leg and a short leg. So those go, so the, that extra, that longer leg goes the second one from the top. And then you got one, two, three, four, five, six of the drops. You have one, two, three, four of the straights. Then you have four straights on this side, so you got eight for the end. Then you have, there's one that has a interesting bend in it. That's this one here. Let's see if I can show you. You can see that little funky bend. There we go. You can see the bend in it. That one goes right here. Then you got a long grab with a eyelet. So that would be the long grab and the the eyelet. Oh, I dropped it. There we go. Then you have three of the medium length grabs. And that's this one here. And then you have, which doesn't go on either end, you have the grabs for the, the um, roof walk. And I'm going to show you something real quick here. These holes, so this is the grab. These holes for the grab iron are gigantic and you'll never get it to set up off the hood properly. So what I do is I'll take some thin CA and I'll put it right down in that hole and let it fill in. Just like that, just let it set. You don't need to deal with it right now anyway. Some more thin CA. And just let those sit. We'll let that cure for a while, let it get hardened, and we'll come back here. So, that takes care of all the grab irons for, for the uh, break end. Now they're all the same on the A end. So I don't, I don't think I need to show you, you know, putting them on. Trimming this is the same, the coupler lift bar, drilling that hole, and the draft gearbox is the same. All of the steps are the same for putting the grab irons on this end. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all of that done and uh, that is going to take care pretty much the assembly except for the roof. Now the roof, I mean sorry, the hatch. So the hatch is this one. I cleaned it up as best I could. There are some where I had to pry it off the, uh, the where it was glued on to the uh, part they sent me. So I tried to clean that up as best as I could. It looks okay. Same for down on this end. Cleaned it up, sanded it. So I think it'll go on just fine. I cleaned up the underside um, here and here so that uh, it'll sit on. But I don't glue this on right now. I'll get this all painted and I'll get all of this painted. That way I don't have a hard time getting up underneath the lip of the roof. And then I'll glue the roof hatches on. And then after um, that's done, then I'll glue the uh, walkway in place. But I'm going to grit blast all of this stuff before it gets painted. Well, everything's done. It's all assembled except for the roof hatch. Like I told you, I'll, that'll go on after it's painted and, and such. So it's all together. I got all the grab irons on both ends. So you can see here. And the last thing we need to do 
is put the grab irons in these holes. So the, the CA has set up. So what I'm going to do, it's filled the hole. So I'm going to take a 12 thousandths drill bit and just carefully lift the weight of the drill bit. Do the drilling. I put a 12 thousandths hole through that fill and get this on camera and I put one through there. Now I do the other end. that one and that one. Now we can take one of these grab irons get the paint off of it. The paint flakes off pretty easily. So what I do is I push it through so it's even with the bottom. Now look down the end and make sure it's even across the top so that the gap is the same all the way across. Now I'll take a little bit of CA and I'll put it on the joint. Okay, there's that one. And now I'll do the same thing for the other side. Looking down the end to make sure it's even all the way across, there we go, and put some CA on there. And that's it. That's all the assembly. Now I can take this out to my grit blasting booth and grit blast everything and then I can paint it. Okay so that takes care of, of building a tangent uh, PS2 4750 covered hopper. Now I want to get one thing straight here. I did not do this video to benefit tangent. I did it to help my fellow modelers build a better kit. Um, I'm not saying what I did is you know perfect or or the way to do it, but at least it gives you an idea on a process or a, a um, methodology to build upon and maybe do it yourself. But um, I can guarantee you, no manufacturer is going to build your kit for you. They'll assemble it, but they won't build it to the level that we can build it ourselves, like what you saw. So, uh, I, don't, I didn't do this for Tangent. I'm not a Tangent groupie. I'm not a tangent uh, fanboy. Um, a company is going to succeed or fail based on their own merits and the decisions they make within their company, not because of something that I say or do. 
So the kit itself, you know, forget the fact that it didn't have the roof hatch in it, um, which is another issue in itself. That's called quality control checking, which apparently didn't happen. But the kit itself, I give it about a 7. Um, and the only reason I give it about a 7 is because of the mismatches and the alignment issues with putting the, some of these parts together, especially with the, uh, the braces, um, the, the, uh, um, the compartment braces, or the braces in between the compartments, where they don't fit up snug against the, um, the bays. So other than that, I mean, if those were to fit perfectly up inside there, I'd probably give it a 9. Nothing ever gets a 10 unless it's absolutely unbelievable fit and finish right out of the box. So it would have got a 9, but I give it a 7 only because some of the misalignment issues and having to fill some of the gaps and stuff like that. So anyway, um, I'm going to get this thing grit blasted. This video wasn't about, you know, finishing the model. It was about building the model, prepping it you know, cleaning up the parts and, and putting it together so you can get a high quality model in case maybe somebody wants to do a, an RPM build or a one-off, you know, a special model or something like that. This is how you can get that really nice looking um, build on it. So I'll get it um, uh, finished later. Um, actually, I don't even need these cars. They're, they're too new for my era. I model 1976. This car is a 1980 car, but prior to buying this car, I was modeling uh, late 70s, early 80s, so that's why I made the decision to get the cars, and then right after I got them, I made the decision to move my era back. So I'm not too concerned about finishing the car, but I will. I probably won't build the third car. I'll probably give it to a friend to build or something like that. So anyway, um, I know this was a really long video, but... If you last it all the way through, um, I really appreciate your time, and I hope maybe you got something out of it and maybe encourage you to build a kit. So anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.